So hello everybody and welcome um, here today for our uh, open house for the Global Library Services Group. Um, we have a bit of a presentation going because um, just because of the format that we have today, we're going to be doing a presentation to kind of go through a bit about what we do um, and also a bit about um, sort of what we see as some of the upcoming trends and whatnot in global librarianship. Um, but I'm going to uh, uh, be monitoring chat and I'm going to be handing over the actual presentation to, uh, to uh, I believe John and Holly are going to be doing a bit more of the speaking, correct John? Yeah. Uh, I will uh, follow your lead, Dan, because right. <laughs> you and Han are our current conveners now. Yes, yeah, Hong and I are the present conveners and Holly and John are the incoming conveners. Yes, so I'm Hong from University of Cincinnati. I may have met you in the past uh, or virtually, but no matter what, I'm very excited for uh, new and uh, long time friends for this group. Uh, we have a very exciting open house for you, but also want to give you a sense of what our monthly meet discussion will be like if you're interested in joining in the future. And just one last thing before we get started, I will be monitoring chat uh, while I'm moving through the presentation slides for folks. So uh, as I do that, um, uh, please. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, send them along and I'll, I'll be sure to uh, let whoever's speaking know that there's a question. And also a big thank you to Xin Li from Cornell Library. She's taking our notes today. All right. Um, well, uh, so uh, as was said earlier, uh, today is open house. Uh, the present conveners are myself and Hong. As Hong said, she's from the University of Cincinnati. Uh, I'm presently the Global Li uh, Services Librarian at New York University Libraries. Uh, and um, we, uh, two of us, along with several other of the folks who are here today, um, are the ones who started this ACRL group uh, to meet a need that we saw in librarianship. Um, so, oh, Dan, do you mind if I Say a little more. Sure. I think a lot of people may not have heard the positions such as ours. So um, to give you guys more details, I, I joined University of Cincinnati four years ago as the first global services. It's a unique position because it was jointly funded by the library as well as the College of Engineering. And the reason is because there is a the biggest undergrad joint program between university of Cincinnati and Chongqing University, China. Um, so this program has currently 445 students. Uh, I'm basically their primary librarian and I travel every fall to meet the new students and as well as my counterparts in China. Uh, but doesn't mean I'm only working with this uh, dual engineer program. Uh, based on my position, I also work with other uh, either emerging or a well-established joint program. So the goal is to have library services to be in all the global co um, programs on campus. Uh, and as for my present role, um, each of our roles kind of kind of uh, differs a little bit between our various institutions, uh, but there are also a lot of similarities in what we do. Um, so specifically, I work within the undergraduate and instructional services group within New York University. And my primary role is to work with uh, NYU's 11 global academic centers. That's their smaller uh, study abroad sites as opposed to their two larger campuses, although I do work uh, very closely with them as well. Right, so the, I would say the difference between Dan and I, um, NYU has global campuses. Uh, in many regions and countries, while University of Cincinnati doesn't have global campuses, but it's through partnerships to establish whatever dual programs or some other programs. So uh, while Dan is working so hard to help students, uh, but they're all NYU students. Me working with those students, they may be UC students, they may be uh, through partnerships. So that's, I would say the difference. But we will hear from Holly and John about also their positions. John, would you like to take the next? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, so my name is John Hickok, and uh, Holly and I will be the incoming conveners for the 2019 to 20 uh, year. Um, as you can see there on the slide, uh, I'm at California State University Fullerton. Uh, that's in Orange County, California, right next to Disneyland. <laughs> and um, uh, my position is the International Outreach Librarian. 
well, it's one of my positions. You know, as librarians, we all wear many hats, but that's uh, my one of my primary positions. And as Dan and Hung have, have both uh, mentioned, um, partnerships, dedicated partnerships, or versus just uh, trying to outreach and make uh, connections. For me at California State University, it's a little of both. We do have formal MOU partnerships with uh, universities overseas, but me and the library always trying to establish and make other international partnerships and international cooperation collaboration. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I do. And I work at Webster University in St. Louis. We're a traditional liberal arts college, 100 years old. But we, in the 80s, got into this international campus business. And we currently have campuses in six countries on three continents. And we're working on Uzbekistan. That's coming next. Um, at those campuses, we do have small libraries. That um, And one of the one part of my job is getting to work with the librarians on those campuses, um, <clears throat> keeping a, a network going so they have support because they really are flying solo where they are. And then also making sure that the electronic resources which come out of the home campus um, are what they need, are giving the, the international perspectives that they need, and that we're able to troubleshoot um, different issues of access in Uzbekistan, there's going to be some issues of um, things tied down for um, China. There's definitely issues um, with the Great Firewall of, you know, if we want to put a video on YouTube, that makes it very accessible for students in the U.S. and in Europe. But um, these are the issues that, that we, um, we're challenged with. And this group has been so wonderful in helping me talk through possible solutions. Yeah, and if you don't mind uh, me stepping in very quickly, uh, I think uh, um, Holly makes an, an amazing point where it's uh, one of the more interesting parts about the pos these positions is when you are dealing with various users who need to use content just from one country to the next or whatever, it, that's always a new and interesting challenge to have to kind of come up with like, oh, we need to figure out solutions for this. Is it a customs issue in this country where customs may be a little bit slower than might be good for our users? Is it a, uh, a you know, an infrastructure issue in a location where it's harder to get really stable internet access for online streaming? So like all that sort of things, uh, it, we really, like, like Holly said, I can't uh, emphasize enough. Her point is fantastic that, you know, it's been such a great thing to have other people in the group to, to help out with those sort of things. All right. Um, I can talk a little bit about this group. You may have already, if you are um, a CRL member or you keep the track news with ACR, you may have already seen some other either discussion groups or interest group or sections that already have the keyword international or global somewhere. For example, this um, ACR international perspectives on academic and research libraries discussion group, uh, IRT, another discussion group for inter serving international students. So what about us? I mean, there's definitely overlap. Uh, we have, you know, users are, you know, we can talk a lot of the topics, share the same best practices. But this, for, uh, this group really formed, uh, I would say four years ago when Dan and I and another librarian, Lindsay Walton from uh, Florida State, we met in the uh, distance service library conference and we, we, we just noticed that there are more and more librarians with the title of global services or they may not have it right away but they already have the responsibilities in their portfolio. So it's just you know we, we, we started to um, just talk unofficially online until three years ago we decided to form a group but not a CRL yet until we also had more people joining and interest in and we decided to put forward a application as the ACR discussion group and that's how we are today. Dan, do you want to talk about what this group is focused on? Sure. Uh, so uh, as the About Us uh, slide says, uh, really uh, largely what we're focused on is really discussing the intricacies of 
what's happening within our positions. Uh, so part of our function is to actually as an act as mutual support within librarianship to basically like say, hey, this new thing came up. Uh, this is a trend that I'm noticing. Are other people noticing this as well? Uh, what are some solutions? Finding those sorts of solutions can be um, can be really great to have more than one brain working on that who has that responsibility. Um, the other thing was uh, also helping to kind of bring to the fore things like, um, you know, different, uh, you know, different cultural considerations that folks should be thinking of because everybody comes in with different backgrounds and they have different knowledge about these sorts of things. Um, also, uh, interests in, in various uh, technology uh, that you might be using at any given time, you know, is, is there any new technology that's coming out and things that we can share with one another. But sharing and collaboration is a huge part about what it is that we do um, so that we can have better uh, better um, understanding of what, you know, what it is that we need to be doing moving forward and a better understanding of, of what each other is, you know. And also in terms of the users we serve, we are not just limited to, for example, students already studying on the U.S. campus. A lot of time they are in another time zone, another country, another totally different cultural, social, political, technology background. And some of us actually travel to meet our patrons. Um, that's just what's required by the job. And some, uh, a lot of us have to keep in track or keep in touch with our users online a lot. And definitely there are challenges uh, with that. So also we talk a lot about our um, visiting scholars and uh, uh, partnerships and also uh, like my case is the counterparts, my colleagues in the in China library, uh, how they we can work together for the program. Oh, uh, let me add one, just one more thing about, uh, I want to echo what uh, Hong and um, uh, Dan have mentioned about the overlap between the other groups. Now, many of you know the Inter ACRL International Perspectives Group. Uh, that's the convener's Ray Pun. You, we all know Ray. He sends out a million emails every, every day. Um, he's great. Um, and then the other one is the... Um, the uh, instruction, uh, let's see, it's the uh, ACRL instruction section, um, uh, instruction to international students um, interest group. Uh, that one also, uh, so I, I pay attention to all, all three. Uh, they're all good. But if I can use a, a fast food analogy here, let's say you have McDonald's, you have Burger King and Wendy's. They, they all have a common theme. They're fast food, burgers, fries, etc. But Let's say I really want to focus on just having a, a frosty, a, a chocolate frosty. Well, that's at Wendy's. You're not going to get that at Burger King or McDonald's. Uh, so you're going to have to go there. So we feel a kind of a, a unique niche um, of talking about partnerships, global partnerships we have at other institutions that we wouldn't be discussing so much about the um, instruction to international students um, so much. Um, so that, that's, um, to use that analogy, that's why this particular group, I think, fills a niche. If any of you that are in, in attendance in today's um, uh, webinar are wanting to explore and, and establish partnerships or collaborations, then this, this group is, is very good for that. And also on top of that, a lot of times your university or institution are actively seeking global partnership. There are already some key partners already MOU have been signed, but also I think the unique part is the library uh, is in line with the university's gl uh, overall global partnership strategies, but then the library also can, we, we are also creating our own global partnership, may or may not be in line with the university global strategy. Like our case, we have um, uh, 11 right now key partners across the world and the library has good relationship with some of them but we also have relationship with a couple of libraries that's not currently the key partner with the university i'm going to skip past the brief history because we already went over that a bit uh, these are some of the other members that we have within our group uh, some of them are in attendance today uh, other than couldn't quite make it today but uh, just to give an idea of who uh, who we, we, we work with and, uh, and what other institutions that they work at as well as what their titles are. Um, 
if, uh, if anybody who is here today wants to, uh, from the group, wants to write a quick thing and chat about who it is and what you're doing so other people can look at it during the rest of it, that would be great. Uh, if you don't, that's fine as well. Um, but I just wanted to let folks know uh, who it was, who were some of our other members. This isn't everybody, but, uh, but it's, a, it's, it's a, gr a group of folks that we work with. We're still fairly new and small, but my feeling with this group is we're very focused and there are times I even feel I have colleagues even I don't see you guys every day or a lot but I feel what like you're definitely my colleagues across the country um, and we have members like stay with us since the beginning but we also have people may have job change coming up um, but no matter what uh, it's not about the quantity it's also the quality that we're looking for that people really your institution have global partnership or you have international users please join us because this is the forum you can find people with very similar roles So uh, the next one is on uh, the variety of roles that we have. Um, and uh, uh, John, did you want to speak a little bit about this one or? Sure. Um, so as you can see here, it's kind of like a, a toggle. Some of us are, others of us are. Some of us are, others of us are. So it, I want to stress that um, there's, uh, let's see, 31 of you uh, all visiting our webinar today. Every, uh, every one of us is all different. Um, some of us, are, as you can see, are assigned exclusively to global librarianship. That's our main job. Other of us wear multiple hats. Uh, some of us have dedicated funding. Others, maybe most of us do not <laughs> um, have funding. Uh, and so we have to kind of make a pitch to our dean or our directors um, to try to go global some more. Some of us are at US, some of us are outside of the US. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So there's no one size fits all amongst all of us. Yeah. Oh, we, we can advance to the next one now. Hong or Dan, why don't you say a little bit about this? Since um, Hong and Dan, uh, to everybody, as, as you've already kind of figured out, were two of the, the founding members. And so they are really the ones that kind of created the purpose goals. I don't think we have to read through all of them, but uh, Dan or Hong, is there any uh, just highlighted one you might want to emphasize or touch on? Well, I think one of the ones that really speaks to most folks um, is, uh, and this, this is even, not even if you have global campuses or whatnot, is, um, is developing ways to broaden intercultural competencies among staff. Um, I think global services librarians have a very unique uh, kind of view into that. But I think as globalization becomes more and more a thing with everything, um, this is an important part of librarianship anyway. So even if it, your role deals more with dealing with things like international students at your institution, uh, that is something that, uh, that, that, you know, is something that everybody needs to deal with and certainly we do as a group. The flip side of that is um, I know from some of the folks who are in attendance, I recognize you from distance learning uh, uh, conferences and things like that. Um, and so even if your, you know, even if your, uh, your focus is statewide or regional within a state and you're dealing with a lot of distance learners, some of the types of things that we need to deal with with technology, um, with accessibility of online uh, materials that we might be presenting and whatnot, that's going to be broadly applicable across um, many different uh, forms of, of, of library positions and whatnot. But uh, those are kind of some of the things that we really do focus on very strongly because we need to do it in this in these positions because it's it's just simply a necessity um, based on how, you know the types of users we have with you know students and faculty who are, who are run. I feel I benefit a lot from this group um, by hearing what my colleagues see in their institutional uh, institutions did. Um, different ways to help users with, uh, despite the dis technology or some other challenges. But on the other hand, I feel it gives me a lot of confidence when I talk to people beyond libraries, for example, the admins who are in charge of global partnerships, 
faculty who traveled abroad to teach or staff and involved in some kind of programs. I feel I get more knowledge. I have more um, you know, different perspectives that I can bring. And usually I can say, have you thought about the library's role, for example, we can help a lot, not only just providing e-resources, um, but also teach the, those students to be more information literate, to get ready for their future academic uh, journey if they decide to come to the US. And if they don't, for, for for example, if it's an online program, they completely just stay in their own country or in their own institution. There's still many other ways we can provide services too. Uh, another quick point that I just wanted to make that I didn't think of until afterwards is, is I think that uh, part of the whole intercultural competencies uh, you know, discussion that we have in developing ways, um, I think that largely um, the paradigm has been in the past kind of exporting this American institutional idea of what an academic library is. And I think that as we become more global, it would be really smart for librarians to look at how are other libraries in other countries that we're working with, working with their collections and working within to serve their populations because you know, uh, you know, having worked in a, in a US library, you know, all of my career, then, you know, I, I know how that works. I have a really good idea of it, but like getting these new ideas and fresh ideas can really make your thoughts on a librarianship much more, um, much more nuanced. Uh, so that's just something I want to add on to that. Our topics are very broad. Uh, if you join our monthly meetings, we usually call for agenda items, um, for things people want to update about their roles, their um, something they want to bring up to the group to discuss. Um, but a lot of times our topics uh, center around, for example, could be our just positions, right? Um, if your university, you, you, you notice your university is getting more active in, in terms of seeking global co uh, collaboration or partnership, how can the library be there, you know, first or, or, or um, be, you know, be more proactive about it. So we talk about our own jobs and the program development from it. Dan, do you want to talk about this part? Sure, sure. So uh, part of what it is that uh, we do um, also involves partnerships outside of um, uh, outside of, of, of the group as well. So talking about those sorts of things and, to, and sharing with each other the sort of some of the projects that we've done, as I said earlier, um, really helps with thinking of new ways that we can serve our communities. So uh, we can see that, you know, here's uh, Lindsay and, and a former colleague, present colleague, of hers, present colleague of mine, um, with uh, one of the projects that they were doing is the first picture that we have on the top, as well as uh, uh, there's a picture of me over on the bottom working with um, a former colleague who, colleague who was a business librarian. So developing um, relationships outside of the group for better online programming or better global programming to you know, within our communities, within our universities, but also outside of our communities um, at various conferences and things like that is something that we discuss a lot uh, within the group and try and figure out more ways that we can that we can do those sorts of things uh, and just share with one another what it is that we're doing so that people might go, hey, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that at my institution as well. Um, so those are some ideas that I, uh, I had uh, to discuss for this. Any other notions of this from anybody else before I move forward? I would just throw in real quickly that um, these monthly discussions, I, I, they benefit me hugely in giving me um, language. This is such a great group of people and I can bring my issue here, flounder around a little bit trying to explain it and, and these folks will just boil it down and say, oh, so basically what you're saying is, and they give me this beautiful language that I can take back to administrators and say, here's the issue. Um, and I sound so much smarter, thanks to this crew. Okay, uh, and the next uh, is just a little bit about, we also share with one another kind of some promotional materials that we do, uh, just to show the, uh, folks the kind of promotions 
uh, that we do within our institutions uh, just to you know let our users know and give people an idea about what we're using as well as what technologies we're using for it uh, you'll notice that I've mentioned technology a lot it's a big focus of kind of what I what I'm doing and I, what a lot of us are doing uh, within there so kind of you know how are we getting information out to folks are we using things like MailChimp for prettier um, emails rather than you know email text blurbs and things along those discussion, uh, discussions. Um, and there's a question that we have, will these slides be available after the discussion? Absolutely, Holly, they'll be uh, available. Other Holly, not Holly, uh, who's presenting, they'll be available um, after the discussion, we'll definitely send them out. Would anybody else like to add anything to this before I move forward on it? Okay. Um, I can talk a little bit about this part, but this definitely relates to all of you guys. Um, a lot of times people say, oh, your title is global services. What do you usually do? A lot of time I teach, uh, even though I do see students once a year face to face, but the rest of the year I have to be um, creative using technologies. I am embedded in an online course. It's a course these uh, joint engineer students have to take in the third year requires a lot of reading, a lot of writing, and I definitely see they're not ready for um, the same level of academic research as students in the US. So I actually teach them really basic, just like Citation 101. Um, what is citation? What's the citation format? How do you avoid plagiarism? And since they're engineer, what are the citation formats in the engineer fields that are you may have you may use in your fifth year senior design? So embed it and also uh, create a lot of tutorials and videos using LibGuide. I don't think it's very different from a lot of what instruction librarians do, but just my um, patrons are not in the US, US. I don't see them a lot. So um, besides that teaching and learning, I do have other duties such as tech, textbook re, uh, support because a lot of times the textbooks are not really available or the current edition are not available in China. Uh, but because they are our students, we, we will provide support for that through no matter e-textbooks or some other ways to definitely follow the copyright regulations. And uh, one quick thing I'd like to add to that is uh, I, uh, I always describe my, my position within Global Library Services personally as I like to advocate for my users, whether they be students or faculty, to my other colleagues who don't have their fingers necessarily as much potentially on the pulse of what the needs of, of you know, international users might be. Um, so, you know, advocating for things like, okay, you know, you may be making an assumption here based on your understanding of what a U.S., you know, uh, student or faculty member, you know, somebody who's used to our library systems might know, but this might be different than the paradigm in another country that we're working with here, where students or faculty are coming in from. So um, that kind, that really falls very strongly into the teaching and learning aspects of it, because oftentimes when we're developing our teaching, we're thinking about these are the assumptions that I have about those folks that I'll be teaching for. And a lot of times uh, those assumptions can really be a barrier to, you know, international students who are coming in to a situation who may not have quite the understanding of, oh, I don't know, you know, as Han was saying, I, I you know, we didn't do citation in the same way or at all uh, in the institutions that we have because our thoughts on that are a little bit different in the, in, in the country where I, you know, I'm used to studying these things. So uh, that's definitely a, a big focus and as well as, you know, what we mentioned teaching and learning and instruction. I might add that um, here's another example of how we are similar but different at the same time with our two other ACRL, our two other international groups. Um, the ACRL group on um, instruction to international students um, primarily focuses on international students that are coming here to either study English or, or to get a degree. And we as librarians are in doing instruction sessions to better serve them. Um, but in this group, I'll give you an example from my myself. My, my university had a partnership with Hong Kong uh, University. And so it was a collaborative degree program where some of our students were going over there. And then some of their students over there, they weren't coming over here, but they were uh, studying by distance education. Um, so that 
pose a, a problem. I have to give some library instruction to these students, but I'm not physically with them. So, you know, we do distance education um, library instruction. We also do libguides, customized libguides uh, that are customized to what their knowledge schema or their knowledge set is already. They're already used to their online catalog. How is that same, similar or different from our library catalog that they need some things they need to know about for pitfalls? So that's a little different than the, um, the other ACL group, which may be just international students here at your US home university. Yeah, so there's an example. So in addition to our monthly video calls, uh, we also try to participate in events. A bunch of us are going to be participating over at, uh, at ALA in, the, in a couple of weeks to come. Uh, as I mentioned uh, earlier, and a few of us mentioned earlier, we've met at some of the distance learning conferences um, that, that have happened. Uh, a few of us went to uh, ACRL 2019. So we, are, we do participate um, in conferences uh, pretty actively. Um, on, on our own and hopefully as a group moving forward more and more. As I said, we're very new uh, as a group, so uh, we haven't had a ton of opportunity yet to do that, but, uh, but we would certainly hope to. Um, and a few of us have even presented together on various projects that we've done, we've done uh, over those times, so. And not only presentation, I know some of you, uh, like Dan and John and Mar, you, I don't know, Holly, also you did uh, even in like publishing articles mm -hmm. or even uh, book chapters about your um, your work too. Yeah, that's correct. Yep, for sure. Okay. So um, this is just some ideas of some of the topics that we discuss, as we've mentioned a little bit earlier. Um, so these are just some of the some of the things that we uh, that usually co come up most frequently during the course of our monthly meetings. And. Uh, now that we've uh, we've kind of gone through that, uh, we wanted to give folks a bit of time for any questions that you might have for us. You can certainly chat to us. If you're not familiar with how to do chat, if you um, go to the bottom of your screen and hover your mouse there, a um, the uh, the uh, little taskbar for Zoom will come up, and under More. Um, there should be a chat for you, or it may just appear on that task bar, bar as it is. You might have fewer options than I have. So. I also want to say um, you don't need to be a CRL member to join our group. Our conference call is open to all. It, it has great benefits if you are ACL members, um, but you don't necessarily uh, need to join at a time. You, you participate in our online meeting. We also have people in Europe and in Canada. Um, it's probably not their primary association. So I'm just saying you don't need to be at this point, but encouraged to be. Okay, so some questions that are coming up. Uh, UF here, could you share the link to the ACRL presentation shown on the previous slide? Oh. <laughs> Oh, can, can you go back, Dan, to that, the ACRL slide? Yeah, that sure. one? Yeah. Um, so just wanted to point out, if you'll notice right under there, it says program proposal. <laughs> um, yeah, we wrote a really crackerjack proposal. Two. Unfortunately, Two. yes. So as you know, um, ACRL is very competitive. And uh, this particular one uh, was, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan Hong was not selected. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, no. Uh, we actually it were happens. active in trying to present, but uh, but you don't always get picked, unfortunately. Uh, as John was saying, uh, is a very tight field of, of comp competition for trying to get accepted. So yeah, and time, the other pro amazing proposal is about intercultural uh, literacy, which was also not selected. Um, but we should definitely keep trying the ALA or ACRL in the future. Um, at, but at, at, as Holly and I are the incoming conveners, um, and I'm going to let Holly chime in on this as well, one of the things that I, I would like to do in the upcoming year is uh, encourage ideas for upcoming um, further presentations. So, of course, ALA next year, ALA 2020 in Chicago, um, and who knows, maybe, maybe even mid midwinter if, if we have enough interest and there's some slots. 
and uh, you have asked again, would be, we would be willing to share the proposal. Um, I, as for the one that Hong and I worked on uh, with, with some folks, uh, I personally would be fine with it. I'm not going to speak for others who put their proposals through, but Since certainly. we are not just uh, limited to ACR members, we use Google Drive to keep all our minutes and agenda, and we did an internal survey, uh, members, so um, please correct me. I don't think a lot of, I don't think any of them is like sensitive that we cannot share. We actually usually uh, send a link to people who are interested in our group to browse, feel free to browse. Um, so one of them, one of the folders is about the proposals we had in the past and then the uh, PowerPoint. So please send Dan or me an email. We can send you that Google Drive link. And I noticed that Holly Morganelli uh, said that you would like to join all meetings. Uh, absolutely. Um, I think probably at this point, uh, uh, John and Holly, would, should, I, should I have, uh, would you want to share your email with them or do we want to uh, share the, the group email? How, how would you best like to do that since you're um, moving forward with the group with that? Sure, that's fine. Are you typing yours, Holly? Yes, I've got mine in the chat now. Just go ahead and feel free to reach out to me and we will add you into the invites for the monthly meeting. And then now you can see, oh, let's see, sorry. Yeah, that's correct. I thought I, thought I had a typo there. Um, Jay Hickok at fullerton.edu, yeah. And I should mention, we should let people know some of you are going to be in ALA annual. So if any of the people here are also going, uh, we're, we're trying to organize a social either dinner or some kind of meet and greet um, because it's, we didn't have time to request a formal meeting as a group. But since some of you are there, if you want to meet Dan, John, Mark, Michael Huang from Stony Brook, and I think, I don't know whether Xin Li you're going, uh, yeah, shoot an email and just even you meet at the booths or, or in the restaurants or walk around. Uh, we will also be, be not me, but the people who are going are very happy to answer any of the questions there too. And I'll share those emails out. I think they were actually only shared with the panelists. So I'll put Holly and John's emails to the attendees. So give me two seconds. I'm just copying them right now. There you uh, go. So there's, I couldn't see the full name. Looks like John from a community college that has developed a new partnership with uh, Ain Shames University in Egypt. The library would love to develop some services for our new international students. We're basically starting from scratch. So this is the group that sound like I'm, I like to be involved. Yes, welcome. And actually, let me tell you, um, University of Cincinnati has a form, formal partnership with Future University in Egypt. So if you want to know more, about how to work with um, counterparts in Egypt, I'm happy to share. But just to tell you briefly, uh, because it's a formal relationship, it actually helps libraries from both sides to talk. Even though it, it could be a little hard, um, there are times to schedule a common meeting. But what, what I did in the past was I created a open source lib guide, um, basically to provide the patrons in Egypt to use either free uh, or free through our uh, libraries, uh, open source in science, engineer, or whatever disciplines their university uh, is, is offering. And a lot of times vendors like APSCO, um, other major vendors will give deep discounts to uh, libraries in the Middle East and Africa. So you might want to find more deals about than to tell your counterparts too. So does anybody else have any questions or comments or things they'd like to share with the group? Please feel free to chat us. Okay. Anything anybody here on the panel wants to discuss with the, with the with folks? Um, or if any of the people here want to tell us whether your library is already involved or uh, maybe like some of you are looking for the opportunity to get involved in the global partner or maybe uh, your university is 
uh, changing some relationships because I see that in my organization, we have a well-established relationship with one university, but then no matter political reason or whatever reason, the relationship has to end or fade out over time. Then how does the library, so I'm curious about your library's current role in the overall institution's uh, global partnership. I see some comments coming through. Hmm. So I noticed in some of the com uh, comments, um, Holly M is mentioning that she uh, was uh, developing these and uh, was in Australia last summer and then London, Paris and Portugal. So yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a, quite a range of, of folks of quite a range of, of, of time, line, uh, time zones too. So uh, I can relate. <laughs> While we're waiting for more comments to come through, uh, let me share with all of you a, uh, a link. I'm gonna put it in the comments here. All right, so the comment, I just typed it. It's an article from last October on establishing partnerships. Let's see, do I see Mark? Is Mark Matson with us today? No, I don't think he is. Uh, so Mark Matson, one of our group members, and I wrote an article in, uh, uh, John Hopkins University uh, Press called Portal um, on establishing partnerships uh, from shoestring startups to full funded institutional MOUs. Um, and I, I'm not just plugging my own work. Uh, it, it, if it was anybody else, uh, I would be plugging it just as, just as much too. Uh, but it happens to be Mark and I that were the co-authors. But it, it really does give a great overview of setting up partnerships, maintaining them, pitfalls to avoid, um, and funding ideas. So um, yeah, it's, it's your uh, convenience. You can take a look at that. That's the kind of um, scholarly work uh, Dan and Hong were talking about earlier that we all do individually as well. Oh, let's see, somebody said, I don't see the link. Uh, you should see it now. It's, uh, mu it's muse.jhu.edu. Um, can somebody confirm that you see the link? Yeah, okay, very good. So, uh, you see it now. Hey, uh, Dan, can you unmute? <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, well, like I was saying, uh, under mute, um, uh, if folks have more questions, uh, we're going to be sticking around for a bit more to answer your questions. If you're interested in joining uh, our meetings, uh, please let us know. Uh, I'm going to be saving the chat so that we, you know, if you send it, say you want to and you send your email over, then uh, I'll, say, I'll share that information with, uh, with Holly and John uh, as well. Um, but they, you can also contact them directly. They've shared their email um, over here. If you want to just contact them directly that way too, that works just fine as well. Uh, let's see, I think we're still waiting for some more comments, but um, I do have one request of, of all of you. Uh, as, as, I, as I said, we have uh, about 30 of you attending today. Um, so could you go to the chat uh, box, all of you, and could you type in just one word, one or both. So and my question is, are you on one of the other groups that we've talked about, the ACRL International Perspectives um, discussion group, or are you on the international uh, students, instruction to international students uh, interest group? So if you could type in uh, one, I'm on one of them, um, uh, or both, or none. So those are your three choices, none, um, one, or both. 
So I'd be very interesting. Okay, none, 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 none. Wow, that's great. Okay, so um, looks like we have a lot of brand new uh, interested from scratch uh, attendees today. That's that's wonderful. Well, great. Uh, thank you all. Um, like I said, I'll stick around a little bit longer for any other questions that you have. Um, and like I said, if you're interested, just let us give us your email or email uh, Holly or John and we're all good. And uh, I will be sharing out the, um, the PowerPoint uh, and uh, with uh, Lois uh, so that uh, we can send out the PowerPoint and, uh, and the recording uh, to folks as needed. Yes, thank you so much. No matter where you are, thank you for joining us. I hope to see you more in the future. Thank you. Okay, take care, everybody. And I'm going to stick around so I can make sure I get all the chats.